I believe that there's a word uh, for this house because on last week we spoke about an answer for X and we talked about how in life we don't know all of the unknowns that will happen and things just happen sometimes and in that we talked about that the answer for X is that number one with God all things are possible. Then we said, because the text said that if my people who are called by my name, if, let's just know that there's a possibility 
that what has happened in my past does not have to plague me in my future. Then we said, my people. We said that not only does if tells us that there's a possibility, but my people shows that God is in a personal relationship with us. That if my people, that God number one, that all things with God are, are possible, and then number two, that God has a personal relationship with us. And so the answer to X is to have a personal relationship with God. We talked about that you cannot depend on the relationship that your mother had. And in fact, as a child, I recall all of those times a mother praying and how her prayers led me to have a deep relationship with God. And then we said, would humble themselves and pray. We said that you've got to be pre prepared, that the answer to X is to be prepared. The preparation that God in your waiting season is preparing you for your next destination. So while you're in college, while you're studying, it is preparing you for the next level in your life. And that everything that has happened to you, whether good, bad, or ugly, has prepared you for the you that is you today. And so you take the sum of all of your experiences and put them together. And the you that you are today is a total sum of all of those. But guess what? You are not your past. For you have, a, you have the chance today to rewrite the script of your life. The narrative might have been ugly last week, but the narrative this week could be something totally different and beautiful. So today, we're looking at the same text. And God led me to tell you to look back at it. Look at what it says in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse number 13. If I shut up heaven, that there be no rain, check it out. Or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people to devour the land, if my people who are called by my name, if they will humble themselves, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and will heal their land. Today, I would like to tag this text with some other consideration, the power of if we're going to talk about the power of if those of you who are English majors might agree with me that this little word if packs a lot of great meaning if can you be used as a conjunction or a noun when used as a conjunction uh, it introduces a dependent clause. That is to say, it introduces a clause that cannot stand on its own. All of us are familiar with if. When used as a clause, it is also called a conditional clause. That means that what one thing cannot happen unless something else precedes it. If, if you study hard and do your homework, you may earn good grades. If you pay your bills on time, you may improve your credit score. If you are nice and start thinking about yourself in a healthy way, you may have a better outcome and a better day. If one depends on the other, the Bible is filled with a lot of ifs. You remember John chapter 14 verse 5 says, if you love me, keep my commandments. John 8 36 says, so if the son sets you free, then you will be free indeed. 
You remember the word, uh, John 15? If the world hates you, keep in mind that it hated me first. Y'all remember? Uh, Jesus said, if you can, said Jesus, everything is possible for one who believes. There is power in the if. All of us have lived our lives on the backside of the if. Because although the promise is there, what do you do when you are living on the backside of the if and you don't see the promises happening now? Many of us have been there when we have waited for God to move and God has shut up heaven. And we're wondering, God, what do I do next? Solomon sits down, remembering what his father David had shared with him. And as he had prayed earlier in the text of 2 Chronicles, the sixth chapter, when he had asked God, Lord, what will happen after Israel turns from you? God then answers with, and responds with this text. And after God responds, after God responds and gives them a litany of ifs, you heard what he said, if I shut up heaven, that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to divide the land, or if I send pestilence among the people, he stops and pauses for the cause and says, if my people, I come to tell somebody here today who's looking at the backside of if, this is not the time for you to give up because you don't see God moving in your favor or in your direction. Because I want to tell you that the power of if is number one in prayer. Look at your neighbor and say pray. The text says, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray. And I know many of you right now might be questioning if God hears you when you pray. Because it seems like God has shut up heaven. You're wondering right now, I go to school every day. I know my one, two, threes, my ABCs. I know twinkle, twinkle, little star. And yet it seems like God has shut up heaven. And I come to tell you that when you find yourself, the other part of the power of if is that you need to learn how to pray. That's why the Bible says that we ought to pray without ceasing. That our prayers, the Bible says the effectual prayer of the righteous availeth much. I come to tell you that the power of if lies within your possibilities of being able to pray instead of complain. And there are many people who are complainers. Who only live their lives complaining about what they don't have. What they didn't do. And what they could not accomplish. I come to tell you that if you turn your complaining into some praise, God will answer your prayers. It's time to learn how to pray. Jesus himself said that when you pray, say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Is there anybody who had a chance to pray this morning? The text says that the power of if lies in your ability to pray. But not only is the fair power in if in your prayers, but you've got to understand and accept the fact that there's privilege when you pray. The Bible says, and if my people would humble themselves and pray, that's your power. Check out your privilege. And seek my face. It's a privilege. You remember Moses on the backside of the desert. He wanted to see God. And God said, I can't let you see me all the way. But when I pass through the cliff of the rock, if you look up, you will see me. I come to tell you that the reason why many of us are not living in the privilege of God is because we're not seeking God's face. But we're seeking God's hand. And when you're seeking God's hand, you treat God like God is an ATM machine. 
that God is supposed to show up when you call, but you can't show up when he needs you. God is saying, stop looking for my hand and start looking for my face. Is there anybody here who came to see the face of God this morning? You didn't come here because you needed a handout. You didn't come here because you needed a blessing. But you came because you wanted to see God's face. Because when you see God's face, you recognize how privileged you are. Is there anybody here who don't mind saying it's a privilege to serve God? It's an honor to be in his service one more time. The seniors used to say, I'm glad to be in the service one more time. It's a privilege, but not only is seeing his face a privilege, it's also a responsibility. It's a responsibility to live on the other side of the hill. Because you can't go every place you want to go. You can't do everything you want to do. You can't say everything you want to say. It's a responsibility. To live on the other side of the if. And there are many of you right now who are wondering why can't I cuss somebody out? Why can't I just act a fool? Because God says you got my privilege. And if you want to be in my face, you can't come in my face any kind of way. Because I'm a holy God. We're going to come to this table today. And when we come to this table, God is saying, you better come here looking for my face. God is saying that if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, that's his power. And seek my face. That's your privilege. But here's the last point. And he says, turn from your wicked ways. The other part, the other power of if is that not only do you get the privilege, but by turning, you make progress. Look at your neighbor and say, it's time for progress. The text says that if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray, that's his power. And seek my face. That's your privilege. And turn from your wicked ways. That's my progress. I can say, like my daddy used to say, I was on my way to hell. Too mean to live. And not fit to die. The handcuffs of hell were on my wrist and the shackles of damnation was on my feet. But I heard the voice of Jesus say, come on to me and rest. I don't know. It's kind of quiet up in here. Not yet, David. It's kind of quiet up in here. So I, I think I'll go ahead and preach to the lights. Lights, let me tell you why this is progress. This is progress, lights, because I remember time when I couldn't get two nickels to rub together to make a dime. Why is this progress? Because I remember when I was in college and I couldn't pay my tuition. Why is this progress? I remember when I was in school, in elementary school, teacher said he was too bad and he'll never learn no one. I'm gonna tell you why, Sister Mignon, it's progress. Because they say he's in special education because of his behavior. And he can't be in a classroom with everybody else. I want to tell you why it's progress. Because I still graduated from high school. And uh, I didn't graduate cum laude. I didn't graduate magnum cum laude. But I graduated, thank you, laude. Can I get a witness here today? 
I'm going to tell you why it's progress. Not only did I graduate from high school with a high school diploma, but I went on to college. And I didn't go to one college, College of Charleston. I didn't go to two colleges, Catholic University. But I went on to a third college, the Mecca of Virginia Union. Only number one, the only one second to it is Howard University. And I graduated. That's progress. But even though I did that, can I tell you what the other progress is? I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior. So let me tell you something, Sister Tonya. Even if I never went to school, and even if uh, I never graduated from high school or college, or never got a job, the minute I accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior, I made progress. So I come to tell somebody who's sitting there in your seats who feel like your life is over because you did not get your degree who feel like life is over because you don't live in the right zip code you can play now son uh, who feel like life is over because the marriage didn't work out well uh, who feel like life is over because you got zero balance in the bank account i come to tell somebody if my people who are called by my name uh, will humble themselves uh, and pray. And here's the good part seek God's face, uh, turn from his real ways. Then uh, will I hear from heaven. Uh, is there anybody here who knows my saying? I just want to hear from heaven. Uh, I know what President Biden said. Uh, he said, uh, he said, uh, he said that the virus was over. But I want to hear from heaven. And can I tell you one thing? If I hear from heaven, uh, I know that everything is going to be all right. Uh, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, say, neighbor, I know it's dark sometimes, but everything gonna be all right i know you got more month than you have money but everything gonna be all right i know the doctors have given you a bad report but everything gonna be all right look at your neighbor and say neighbor say neighbor it's gonna be all right if i hold my peace let the lord fight my battle i'm gonna keep on marching because i'm a soldier in the army of the lord and in god's army i might get wounded but i'm glad y'all i serve a doctor who never lost a patient and every now and then i feel his spirit moving on the inside and make me want to run is there anybody here who know my son i'm gonna run for jesus i'm gonna run for jesus so we're about to take this communion the power of if the power if is that you gotta pray until something happens look at your neighbor Say, keep on pushing. Keep on pushing. You know, I remember, I remember when Christopher was born. I was in the room, and your mama, she was laying on that table, and she said, I don't feel like pushing. I said, you got to keep on pushing. You got to keep on pushing. She said, no, but it's painful. I said, you got to keep on pushing. She kept on crying. And can I tell you, some of y'all don't know that you're pregnant right now. God has put something in you. 
and you getting bigger God is putting something in you and you don't understand why you don't like the stuff you used to like I come and tell you that God has got you pregnant and you're blowing up and God is about ready to deliver this thing out of you but you gotta push look at your neighbor and say push you gotta push pray pray when you feel like giving up pray it took her a few a few hours but she kept on pushing she started yelling and screaming but she kept on pushing and a few hours a few hours later we saw his head coming out I said keep on pushing a few minutes later his head came out we saw his shoulder he couldn't make it on his own so the doctor reached in and grabbed him and she kept on pushing I know that's, that's kind of tight right there but I got to tell somebody the wind you pray it might get painful you may feel like giving up it might seem like God ain't heard you but you got to keep on pushing that means pray until something happens she kept on pushing and can I tell you one thing on May 4th 1997 a little boy came out by the name of Christopher and you let me tell you why his name is Christopher because I said this baby is gonna be like Christ his name is Christopher because he gonna be like Christ and I come and tell somebody that when God gets ready to deliver the baby out of you he's got a name for the baby do you want to know his name somebody said what's his name you want to know his name what's his name his name is the power of God yeah you pregnant with the power of God so you better keep on pushing because if you got his power storm winds may blow the breakers may dash but you will survive in the name of the father in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit.